Christian, I believe that we are so blessed that we would have escaped storms in the, in the past. And today we are here today knowing that we would have escaped another storm. And so we have to give God a lot of thanks for this reality. I just want to specially welcome today Pastor Devon Champier, the pastor for the Newport District of Seventh-day Adventist Churches. We want to say welcome to him that even though he is on vacation, he has decided to join our congregation today and we say to God be the glory, great things he has been doing here. I just want to ask the church today, how many individuals know of the event that took place on October 22, 1844? I am seeing a few hands going up. But as Seventh-day Adventists, we need to understand that on October 22, 1844, we have what is called the Great Disappointment. And I want you to understand that coming next month, we will be in that month. And we are preparing something special for you. Amen. Amen. We are planning to reenact what happened then in 1844 next month and I think it will be around the 20 or the 27th of October and all our young people will be involved our choir will be involved as well and so I want to meet with all of our young people after divine service as you will get in a briefing as well as you will know when we will be having our rehearsal all those individuals who want to be a part of this play, we are inviting you to come for meeting after divine service today. And also, I want you to realize that we are planning to revive our Pathfinder Club. And as a result of that, we will be having a meeting at 3.30 this evening. And we want to meet with all the master guides let me see the hands of all the invested master guides in the church. Amen. So we want to meet with all the master guides and the master guide in training. 3.30 this afternoon as we will be putting plans in place for a Pathfinder Club for the district. And we will be hosting it here in this church here in Tollgate. So we invite you for a very special meeting at 3.30 this evening. Today is a very special day. I must say that this is the only church I would have seen or know of that celebrate Youth Sabbath every month. And I believe that this is a special and a great initiative as it will help our youth to develop their substance. Amen, someone? And as a result of that, today we are celebrating our youth summit. And I am here truly will be the speaker for today. I just want to thank young Michael Williams for his kind words of introduction. I, I believe that he was searching for the term, but just wanted to know that the term is an intern pastor. Amen. And I want to thank the youth, the children choir, for blessing our hearts earlier with such lovely songs. Indeed, we love to see individual ministering for the master. May not necessarily mean by means of preaching, but whatsoever it is that we can do, whether it be singing or otherwise, we are going to do it all to the honor and to the glory of God. And so we are well pleased today to have singing for us, our young children. We want to say thank you for blessing our hearts with such lovely song. Now today, as is displayed on the screen, we will be looking on the topic, prison break. Amen? But before we begin the message, I just want you to repeat after me the affirmation. For every Bible teaching, the devil has a counterfeit. I am what I am. 
But I know what I can become. If the Bible says it, I will accept it. And that settles it. For Jesus came to seek and save the lost. Just want our technician to know that I'm controlling the slides. So if you see the slides move, it's not moved by itself, but I have a remote control here that I use to skip the slides. I invite you to bow your heads with me at this time while I pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for affording us the privilege to be here in your house to worship you and thus another Sabbath day. I pray now that as I'm about to break the bread to your people, that you will use me that I may not be seen or heard, but you alone will be lifted up, be exalted and be glorified. Give us a message of relevance today. And I pray that you will make your message go forward with authority, with clarity and with great power. That individuals will learn something from you today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. We are looking on the caption today, prison break. I am certain that by hearing the term prison break, Many individuals would have remembered one famous movie called Prison Break. Amen, someone? But let me inform you all today that this movie is categorized as a narrative or a fictional film. Consequently, it is then factual that the various scenes within the series are false. I'm not real, but today I am here to introduce to you to a real prison break that occurred over 2,000 years ago. But before we proceed in the message, I just want to ask a few questions as I would anticipate your honest answers. Let me see the hands of those of us who would have been to prison before. Let me see the hands of those of us who knows what it is like to be in prison. Let me see the hands of those of us who are hoping that one of these days you will experience a life in prison. I'm looking, I'm not seeing a sister Esther raise her hand. Amen. But the counterfeit movie, which was referred to before, depicted the life of one called Lincoln Burroughs, the main character, who was sentenced to prison on death row for the murder of the Vice President of the United States of America's brother. Lincoln Burroughs, uh, Mike, Lincoln's brother Michael Schofield, a structural engineer, was furious that his brother was about to be put to prison and also to be dead, to, to be killed for a crime that he didn't commit. And as a result of that, he obtained a copy of the blueprint of the prison and tattooed it to his body along with other strategic plans geared towards breaking his brother out of the state penitentiary. Confident that he will succeed, he went to a bank and discharge a deadly weapon and allow the police to apprehend and detain him. He was then convicted and placed in the same prison which housed his brother. There he executed his plan step by step, accounting for every contingency, which resulted in, in eight convicts, including his brother and himself, escaped the prison and evaded the authority. Quite an interesting story, isn't it? But I want to let you know today that as interesting as this story is, there is a greater, more fascinating prison break that was staged some time ago in history. Am I talking to God's people? Let's take a journey to the book of Acts. We are looking at Acts chapter 12, verse 1. The Bible says to us that what? Know about that what? Time error the king stretched forth his hands to what? Fetch certain 
of the church. Luke's vivid description of Herod's action towards God's church enables us to understand that Herod stretched forth his hand to enter in evil on God's church. He stretched forth his hand to destroy God's church. But I would like to let us say to King Herod today that he won't be able to destroy the church of God so easily. Am I talking to God's people today? You want you to understand that the church of God has one foundation. He is Jesus Christ, the Lord, Lord. She is his new creation by water and the word. And as long as Jesus is still the watchman of the church, we have nothing to be afraid of. Don't be afraid when you're attacked by the enemy. Am I speaking to someone today? If you are not a threat to Satan's kingdom, it therefore means that you and the devil are running in the same direction. I want you to understand that, that this is God's church. The devil may try his best to destroy it, but this church will stand and its truth still marches on. The poetic songster, more famously known as the psalmist, David admonished us in Psalms 127 verse 1. He said that except the Lord what? Build the house. They labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city. The watchman walk it but in vain. And I hear Isaiah reminding us in Isaiah 41 verse 10. The fear thou not for I am what? With thee be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my fellow righteousness. And because of Jesus, we have no need to fear the enemy. Because of Jesus, we have no need to worry nor fret. Because we know that we are covered under the precious blood of Jesus. Can I get a witness on this side? Amen. The book of Acts, chapter 12, verse 2 says, And he killed James, the brother of John, with a what? With a sword. I want someone in the church today to understand that when you have accepted the call to become a born again Christian, you have now become the greatest threat to our enemies. And as a result of this, he will send all sorts of men to attack you, to revile you, to persecute you, or simply to have you discouraged. But like so today, we've got to declare that though he slay me, yet still will I trust him, for I know that my Redeemer lives. Am I talking to God's people today? The Bible says that, and because he saw it please the who? The Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. We have some politicians in our society today like King Herod. I want you to understand that King Herod was extremely egological, egotistical whose actions are only to attract public eyes how do are they do things to receive and maintain power and praise from people not caring about the implications that may result especially to God's children Herod wanted to remain popular so he attacked him, he acted in a manner that individuals within his constituency enjoy Herod was willing to compromise in order to maintain his power. Some of us in our society today have a rate best when we are boosted by others. Am I speaking to someone? Someone said that we drink too much supplicant that it boosts us up. Am I speaking to God's people today? But there will come a time when God will put an end to this. And the persecutors are going to be sorry. Individuals are going to wish that they hadn't laid hands on the child of God. I want you to understand that when you stand up for Jesus, Jesus will stand up for you. But let's closely examine the time they chose to take Peter captive. 
It was a time when the Jews came together in Jerusalem from all parts to celebrate the Passover. The time we are in a lot of witnesses to Peter's demise that have been established. But the reason God allowed King Herod to postpone the execution of Peter was due to the fact that at the time the citizens were more focused on the Passover. And Herod wanted to have the execution at a time when he had everyone's uh, attention so he could receive all the praise or the support from the people. But what he did not know was uh, that it was God who delayed the process. Am I speaking to someone? It was God who delayed the process uh, that he could have made a divine intervention. So individuals could see and know that he is still the God Almighty. That he is still the God who is in charge of this world. Amen. I want us to realize that sometimes God will allow us to endure certain trials uh, as well as temptation in order for us to become victorious. This is why I can say to someone today that whatever challenges you are coming through, just hold on to Jesus and he'll ride out your storm. The word of God says in verse 4, the Bible says that when he had what? Apprehended him, he put him in where? In prison. King Herod ordered that Peter be placed in the dungeon where he won't be able to humanly escape before his execution. The Bible says, and delivered him to four quarter neons of soldiers to keep him. That is, to 16 soldiers. Each part consisted of four who were to watch him day and night with the arrangement of a ship system. Four at a time, two of them being chained to him and two of them watching before the door of the prison. This prison appeared to be what we call a level one facility which will guarantee no escape for Peter. Am I speaking to God's people today? Herod wanted to take double precaution because he remembered the former escape of the apostles from prison. But the question I would like to ask today, how comes the enemies of God knows the power of God and the children of God don't know about the power of God? I want you to understand today, I was speaking to God's people, and I placed him in a maximum security prison facility where an escape or rescue through human means was cut off. I was speaking to God's people. But shall I share something with you today, someone? That men's extremity is cause opportunity, and every setback is a setup for a major comeback. Am I speaking to God's people? So the Bible says that intending after Easter, since the word Easter hasn't been used until centuries after this book was written. We will understand that King Herod was waiting until after the Passover to bring him forth to the people. He wanted to make an example out of Peter by this intended public humiliation. King Herod didn't know that what the devil means for evil, God means for good. Because God will deliver. Am I speaking to someone? I want you to understand today that the same God of Daniel, the same God of Sajah, Meshach, and Abednego is the same God of today in 2018. And I want you to realize that the same God who have done that for them will do it again. And the son writer says that he'll do it again. So the Bible says in verse 5 that Peter therefore was what? Kept in here in prison. But I like what followed uh, the semicolon and the sentence. Uh, the Bible says uh, that even though Peter was kept in prison, but am I speaking to God's people? Peter he, he was incarcerated in prison, but prayer. Uh, Peter was put in prison, but 
butter. There is a little conjunction called butter that follows what happened. The situation looks desperate, but it looks like Peter will be put to death, but it looks like you might lose your job, but it looks like you might lose your marriage, but it looks like you may lose a battle to cancer, but but I've found the answer. I've learned how to pray. I believe that if there is ever a time when God's people need to pray, it is right at this very moment because Peter was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church and to God for him. I want the church to understand that whenever one of our brothers or sisters finds or herself in difficulties, the church members must not hesitantly go to visit New City, take up the Royal Telephone, the WJES US, because prayer has to go forward without season for the children of God. I want you to let you know today that we receive great power when we go down on our knees. Because there is a catastrophic eruption in hell when the devil and his angels see God's people going down on their knees to pray to the Almighty God. Am I speaking to someone? One songwriter puts it this way that I found the answer down on my knees. As Christians, we've got to stop complaining and do more praying. Am I speaking to someone today? I wanted to realize that when Peter was placed in prison, the individuals, they didn't picket the government or the White House. They didn't protest or appeal the Supreme Court. They didn't write a petition. They didn't plan a fight. They didn't plan a riot. And they didn't call a church board meeting. Am I speaking to someone? They didn't call an elders meeting. They didn't call a business meeting. The Bible said that they called a prayer meeting. Am I speaking to someone? They they were praying non-stop. Their prayers were specific. Yes. I dare someone today to get specific with God. Yes. So many times we are praying, but we are praying all over the places. But we've got to get specific with God. Write down your prayer list. Then go back two months or three months of the line to check off your list. And when you see how much God has answered your prayers, you will realize that the same God of yesterday is the same God of today. And He is the same God forevermore. Amen. But I want us to understand that though Peter was in prison, Peter had peace. And peace is not the absence of tension. Peace is security in the middle of tension. Am I speaking to God's people? The Bible says in verse 6, And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was what? Am I speaking to someone? When Herod would have brought him forth the same night, the night before his execution, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keeper of the door the kept the prison. If it was one of us who was there the night before our execution, we probably would have been so worried and frightened. Our blood pressure would have raised to the maximum limit. Am I speaking to someone? Because someone said, that it is not the execution that killed you, but the way that comes with it. Am I speaking to someone? Some individuals die before the execution as a result of the threat. But how can someone who was about to die, who was about to be executed, be sleeping? That's the question I want to ask today. Am I speaking to someone? He was so calm and confident that he fell asleep. But what lessons can we learn from Brother Peter today? What lessons can we learn from the apostle? What lessons can we learn from Peter today? But I want you to understand that what lesson we can learn from Peter is that when your faith is awake, you can go to sleep. Am I speaking to God's people? The psalmist David said that, Yea, though I walk to the valley of the shadow of death, I will walk. 
fear no evil, for thou art with me that run the staff. They comfort me. That's the only assurance I need to anchor my faith in Jesus. I'm glad to let someone know today that we have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the pillars roll, fastened to the rock which cannot move, rounded firm and deep in the Savior's love. Today I want you to understand that the only reason we have to sleep is when our faith is awake. Jesus was in the storm, but because his faith was awake, he was sleeping. Peter was in prison, but because his faith was awake, he was sleeping. Am I speaking to someone? Because we know who to call upon when we are faced in the midst of our crisis. The story I've been told of an old lady who was living in her home and when she was there, two men break in to steal. And I wanted to understand that when these individuals went in, the lady took up her Bible and started to read Acts 2.38. The men freeze wondering what was going on, but the police came and apprehended them. The police asked, you were there. Why didn't you not run or hide? They said to the police that I was here but heard and I saw the lady with two acts and a 38. I wanted to understand that when you stand for Jesus, no weapon that forms against you shall prosper. But what message can we receive from Acts 2 38 today? The Bible says, and Peter said unto them, What? Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and he shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Am I speaking to God's people today? We're moving on to verse 7 of Acts chapter 12. The Bible says what? And behold, the angel of the Lord, of the Lord came upon him, and a light what? Shine in the prison, and he smote Peter on the side, and raised him up, saying, Arise quickly, and his chains fell off from his heart. I just, when I read the story, I just see the power of Jesus. Because I can only imagine that it was night that Peter was in prison. And if you are in night, in a dark place, and a light shine, you have to see the light. Am I speaking? But I want someone to realize that the Lord is saying that when he comes to deliver you, it is only you that he's coming for. And so though the light was shining, the guards could not have seen it. And though the he was changed to the God, and I want to realize that the change was so heavy that when they fell to the ground, they had to hear the change. But because of the angel went there, they did not even hear the change fall into the ground. Gage and God kept his family away from him, but Gage and God couldn't keep the angel away from him because the Bible declares. That the angel of the Lord encamped round about them that fear him and delivereth them. Am I speaking of God's people today? But in the serious prison break, we will understand that the younger brother, propelled by love, who went inside the prison to break out his sibling. But in the story, we realize that it was the Holy Spirit. Am I speaking of someone? Propelled by love, who came down, went inside the prison and shackled the prison and set them free. I want someone to know today that God can set someone free today. That there are times when God has to come down Himself to set His people free. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. One of my friends, while he was supervising at the Wexford Court Hotel in Montego Bay, he shared the story with me. That one day his boss came to him and said, you got to work on the Sabbath. And he said, don't worry yourself. I'll meet you Sabbath morning at the hotel. And he went to the hotel dressed in his jacket suit. The boss said to him that it is either you stay or you leave. He said to the boss, you know I can't stay here today because it is a 
sermon and they have to go to church. The boss said to him, well, we need you to work today because it is a big day here today. He said that the governor general is going to come down. The prime minister is going to come down. And Captain Burrell is going to come down. It's a three-in-one experience. He said to his boss, well, I've got to go to church today. He said, why is it so? He said, it's a big day at church today. The boss said, what are we talking about? He said, well, the father is going to come down. The son is going to come down. And the Holy Spirit is going to come down. It's going to be a Three in one experience. I want someone to know that whenever we come into the house of God, in which love made for us to dwell among Him, He is always here. He's coming down Himself. But this young man, like Peter, knows that whatever the loss for the sake of righteousness shall be counted as gain. How many of you here today can truthfully raise your hand? And declare that I am willing to lose all my early possessions for the righteousness sake. But after all, a profound question has been asked in the Bible. What does it profit if a man should gain the whole entire world and to lose his watch, his soul? But normally when you are going to sleep, you will take off your clothes. Am I speaking to someone? You will take off your outer garments. And because Peter wanted to rest well, he took off his outer garment. But the Bible says that when the angel visited him, the angel said to him, To what? Greet thyself and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he said unto him, Cast thy garment about thee and follow me. In other words, the angel was saying, Put on your clothes. Get dressed because we are about to leave this place. But I can't just imagine that Peter was saying, Is it God who is speaking to me? Are you realizing that I am in prison? Are you realizing that the gods are here? How are you realizing that I'm chained to God? But the angel said, Put on your clothes because we are coming out of this place. Am I speaking to someone? But when I asked the question earlier, I ask the question, how many of you would have gone to prison before? I see no hand went up. But what if I told you that every one of us would have had an experience in prison? It may not be a state penitentiary. It may not be a whole station. But I want you to understand that all of us are imprisoned by something called sin. I must be here. But I don't know about you, but I just don't like the sin thing. I must speak of the God's people. I want you to understand that the Israelites were imprisoned in Egypt, but Moses came to their rescue. Daniel was in prison in the lion's den when God came to his rescue. Such a mission and the Bethlehem were in prison in the fiery furnace. But Jesus came to their rescue. Lot was in prison in Solomon Gomorrah. But Abraham came to their rescue. Am I speaking to someone? Jesus was in prison in his tomb. There were gods there, but I wanted to understand that he resurrected himself and stayed a prison break. Most of us in church today are imprisoned by sin, but I'm here to let you know that Jesus, who changes not, can stay a prison break in your life because of his shed blood and called this cross. We can have the confidence that no prison can hold us captive. Am I speaking to someone? No prison can hold us captive. So without hesitation, in verse 9, And he went out and followed him, and wished not that it was true which was done by the angel, but thought he was a what? It was, he was a vision. Peter was just so amazed by everything that was going on that he didn't even realize that it was the angel of the Lord who came to his rescue. But I want you to know today that according to the custom, 
If a God is caught sleeping on his duty, he will be sentenced to prison. But for all of this to be happening, and they didn't even realize, I can only imagine that they were fast asleep. I want us to understand that sometimes the Lord will have our enemies to sleep that he can set us free on his beginning of someone. He said that he will make us for you a table in front of the enemy. And so the Bible says here, I want you to understand that there comes a time in our lives when God will cause sleep in our enemies that he can step in the picture to perform wonders. The Bible says in verse 10 that when they were past the first and the second war and came unto the iron gate that leaded unto the city which opened to them of his what? Own a car. The gate opened by itself. I wanted to understand that this is the first automatic door in history. I remember my first trip to the Norman Manley International Airport in Montego Bay. And I remember that as a child I was walking up to the door and when I reached a certain point I saw the door opening and no one was there to open it. And so I was amused by it. I went in and I came out. I went in and I came out. I went in and it came out because I saw the door opening. But I wanted to understand that they were coming. And as they reached a certain point, I believe that the sensors was triggered and the door was open by itself. I wanted to know that whenever God is setting you free, no matter what obstacles may come in your way, we'll not be able to stand. Am I speaking to you? Whatever stumbling blocks, he will remove it to set you free because he will sunset free. is free indeed because greater is he in he that is in you, that is in that he that is in the world. I want to understand that who God bless, no man can curse. And they went out and passed through one street and forthwith the angel departed from him. I believe that this was the greatest prison break at every stage in history. But when God does something extraordinary for you, you can't just keep it to yourself. You can't just be selfish with it. You've got to go and share in the good news with others. You've got to declare boldly that there is no shame in my game. I'm speaking to someone. The Bible says that and when Peter was come, to himself. He said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord has sent his angel and delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all of the expectation of the people of the Jews. We must bear in mind there are certain circumstances in life that is only God who can deliver us from. When we find ourselves in these difficulties, you've got to call upon the name of Jesus. When you call on the name of Jesus, God will be glorified. The devil will be horrified. And God's people will be edified. Am I speaking to someone? Peter's miraculous prison break resulted in doubt as well as surprise among the true believers of Christ. The Bible says in verse 12, that and when he had considered what? The Bible saying that when he had considered a thing in verse 12, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying, and as Peter knocked at the door gate, and Thomas came to walk in name what? Rhoda, and when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told her Peter stood before the gate. Rhoda runs back to tell the church that what they are praying for is already answered. Am I speaking to somebody? He went to tell them that what they are praying for is at the door. Am I speaking to someone? I wanted to understand that when we get specific with God, when we unite ourselves and we come and we pray for some things, when the Lord will answer us in such a way that we ourselves cannot even believe. Who am I speaking to you? 
So in verse 15, the Bible reminds us, And they said unto her, Thou art what? Mark! When you stand up for Jesus, when you believe in Jesus, when you follow Jesus, person will believe that you are mad. They said that you are crazy. You are all insane. But she comes on the affirm that it was even so. Then said they, it is his angels. But Peter continued knocking. And when they had opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. There are some things that the Lord will do in our lives that we just won't be able to comprehend. You've got to trust in God in tough times because God will deliver you. The steps of a God, of a good man is ordered by the Lord. In verse 17, the Bible says, but he beckoned unto them with the hand to hold your peace, delivered unto them how the Lord had brought him out of prison. And he said, go show these things unto James and to the brethren. And he departed and went into other place. Now as soon as it was day, there was no small stir among the soldiers. They were looking for Peter, but Peter was not gone. And what was become of Peter, they did not know. And the Bible says, And when Aaron had sought for him and found him not, he exclaimed the keepers and commanded that they should be put to, up, to death. And he went down from Judea to Corsia and their abode. Today I say to someone, whatever prison the devil is holding you captive in, just keep trusting in Jesus. Because one of these days, he will set you free. As I come to a close, I would like to declare boldly that as atrocious as a prison is, I would rather to go to prison than to go to hell. Am I speaking to someone in church here? And I would rather to go to prison than to go to hell. Let me share the reason with you. When you are in prison, you have a place to sleep. When you are in prison, you have been fed good food. Who am I speaking to someone? When you are in prison, you have a chance to repent of your sins. When you are in prison, you have a place to take a shower. When you are in prison, you have a place to exercise. But when you go to hell, only one thing you will experience, and that is burning in hell fire. I would rather to go to prison than to go to hell any day. I want someone to understand today that we all got to make our life an election sure so that when the Lord shall return, that when he shall burst his eastern sky, he will say to us, Well done, though good, and thou faithful servants, you have been faithful over a few things, and no into, into the joy of the Lord. That's a place I would like to be. And because of that, I'm saying to him today that goodbye and hello to Jesus. I'm saying goodbye to the devil and hello to Jesus. Goodbye to hell and hello to heaven. I want you to understand that I want to go over there. My hope is built and nothing less but Jesus Christ and righteousness. I hear but just the sweetest name. But only lean on Jesus' name. And Christ a solid rock has stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. Because I want to get over yonder when he returns. I'm going to make up my mind that whatever it takes, I'm going to follow Jesus Christ. Today we have listened to another message. God bless all of you. Him is number six three three. 